And here we go. The verdict is in. It will be announced very shortly. I just want to discuss some possible outcomes and provide some optimism. Just some optimism, okay? If I'm wrong, we'll deal with that. But it doesn't do us any good to be negative right now. After three or four days now in deliberation, four days, I was 100% sure. I was 80% sure we would get a verdict yesterday. I was 100% sure they weren't going to go into the weekend. So about 11 o'clock this morning, reporters started coming, 11 o'clock local time, reports started coming out that a verdict was in. Now, what is that verdict? What do I think it is? Well, I'm going full-blown optimism. I believe there was one holdout on the jury, maybe two. And last night, they ended early. So they left at like 4 o'clock or something like that. And uh, one of the jurors, at least, took some paperwork home. What I hope and believe is the case is that there was one holdout and they were arguing, blah, 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 blah. They realized that, that this person was stonewalling. So they went home and they slept on it and they came back this morning and they will acquit him. That's my optimism, white pill, be happy moment. That said, there are a lot of other alternatives that could be the case right now. First and foremost, it seems extremely unlikely that given how long they've deliberated, that you would have a guilty verdict coming. That doesn't mean what is the, you know, plan for the best, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst? It's possible. If they find him guilty uh, on any charges, it would be very bad. Um, some of the minimum sentences for these charges, even the secondary charges, are like 10 to 15 years. Um, it will cost him the prime of his life. Um, could they be overturned? Well, there's a couple of things on the table right now. First and foremost... We have uh, the two motions for mistrial, one with prejudice, one without prejudice. The one with prejudice uh, means that he cannot be retried. The one without prejudice uh, means that it would essentially be a mistrial and they would get another kick at the cat, so to speak. The first one with prejudice was for impugning Kyle's Fifth Amendment right to not speak to police and and, and to poison the well uh, by telling the jury, insinuating to the jury that that's only something a guilty person would do. Very, very, very bad. Uh, in court, a massive, massive no-no. Um, secondly, the mistrial with prejudice, without prejudice, refers to, from what I remember now, the, the evidence where the defense team got a lower grade quality of some very important uh, footage, and they didn't know uh, until after the fact. Um, this is a, a major issue in court. To the layman, it may seem like a loophole or a technicality, and that's how it feels to me. Some people would think that, you know, Fatlock did it on purpose. We can't know that, but what we do know is whether or not he did it on purpose, whether or not he tried to hide anything, doesn't change the fact that the prosecution knowingly provided a degraded version of evidence to the defense. This would also be grounds for a mistrial and another kind of kick at the cat. A mistrial with prejudice obviously would be just as good effectively as a win, right? Um, they couldn't bring those same charges back up. And, you know, obviously a full acquittal would be the best. A mistrial without prejudice, I would say doesn't necessarily mean anything horrible. Why? Because there are several things that were removed from the you know charges that were dropped. The possession charge of from a minor and the curfew charge were both dropped during trial, which means these are two other negatives that aren't coloring the jury's opinion of Kyle going into it the next time. Um, so I think you get another kick at it, 
I still think the facts are the facts. Uh, we shouldn't be um, crushed by a mistrial. We should hope for an acquittal, but a mistrial even without prejudice, I think doesn't change the facts of the case. I don't think there's anything else that, you know, is going to be submitted that is worse for Kyle. Uh, there's more stuff coming in that is better for Kyle. Um, second, you know, in a mistrial, you could do a better job in jury selection and not letting a mask doomer in there who is clearly, uh, as, as been, you know, general, general consensus is that they are the um, floor person and also the only holdout. So getting rid of that person would be good. So... A mistrial would be fine, in my opinion, because there's enough that we've seen now, um, enough missteps that the defense has had that could be corrected the second time around. And I'm not even one of those people that's like, oh, you want to have different defense attorneys. Um, you know, Ricada's stream, and they're all lawyers. You know, they're looking at it different than me. Me, I'm like, just give me another chance because I think that they know where they where they messed up and they know what they would want to do in the second time around. Now the judge is sitting on these mistrial backup plans, but everything about this judge seems to indicate that he's not interested in making this case, his career. He's a hundred years old. He's been doing this forever. I haven't seen anything where I think he's going to punt anything or he certainly doesn't want to. It's my opinion that the way the judge is treating it, the way the judge is interacting with the jury, the way the judge is referring to things, that it is his opinion that Kyle is innocent. Where would that factor in? Well, it would factor in in terms of um, sentencing. It would also factor in in terms of whether or not he declares a mistrial. The question you have to ask yourself is, does he have the stones to put his name on a mistrial with prejudice. I don't think we've seen that unless he's going to shock us all because there's been plenty of times where he, you know, has had it out with the defense. Um, and, I'm sorry, the prosecution. And he has come right up to the line. Don't get brazen with me. We all remember that moment. He's come right up to the line. But not followed through. On the Fifth Amendment issue, which was what got him the most mad, um, that did not happen. Uh, on the uh, evidentiary issue, I think the prosecution was able to tire his old mind out uh, by running circles, keep talk, 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 talk. And he said, and he forgot about it, essentially. I think Judge Schroeder wants to have the jury do the right thing, in my opinion, and acquit Kyle. <laughs> And a word on remaining optimistic. It is extraordinarily, extraordinarily easy to look at the worst case scenario constantly. It takes no, it takes no strength to be blackpilled, to expect the worst and be confirmed when it happens. It takes true strength to have faith, faith in other people, faith in the system, and sometimes that faith gets rattled. But understand that regardless of the verdict today, there are obviously both mistrial motions that need to be answered. Second of all, we have appeals. Now, you never want to count on appeals, but no matter what happens today, other than acquittal, does not mean justice has failed us. Now, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to find the biggest bottle of Tums I have. Um, some sort of other, you know, maybe some, uh, some booze. And I'm going to be right here to report on the results. I'll be, I might join the live stream that's watching it. Um, but I also want to do my job here on this channel. Obviously very important. A lot of people can't just stay on the live stream. So they want to watch the quick video. So to recap. I'll probably have a video, you know, within minutes of the of the verdict. We have two possible mistrial opportunities. We also have um, appeals. We also have the jury making the right decision. My hope and feeling is that the one holdout figured out, you know, 
made out, made themselves accept the facts of the case, and we're going to have an acquittal today. We'll know very shortly. Hang on to your butts.